Our scripture passage today is two parables from the 15th chapter of Luke. The parable of the lost sheep. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. And the parable of the lost coin. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of the Lord. As I uh, greeted people this morning, I met some new folks that we, that we haven't uh, had with us before. And one of those was a, a wonderful young lady named Kayla. Wave, Kayla. Kayla is new in Rapid City, and she's at Ellsworth Air Force Base. And she's just been here two months, and I said, I can relate to that. Uh, and so, Kayla, welcome. It's, it's nice to have you with us this morning. Deb and I were at the uh, South Dakota State Fair in Huron, South Dakota, where millions know, hundreds of thousands know, a few people came. <laughs> and the announcements every day were so awesome. The announcements would come from the uh, security department that a little girl's parents have been lost. She is waiting for you at the security office. Isn't it interesting? Sometimes us as parents get lost. Our message today is entitled Lost and Found. How many of you have ever lost something? How many of you have ever tried to lose something and it won't go away? Deb and I went to the air base yesterday for the Air and Space Museum and Car Show. Now, I didn't realize it, but Deb had an agenda yesterday. For our years of life, she has always told me when I mess up, I'm sending you to the moon. <laughs> Do you remember that show some years ago, Jackie Gleason, I think? Alice, you're going to the moon. Well, I found out she went out there to see what airplane or what missile she could put me on <laughs> to send me to the moon. And there were some that would work, wasn't there? She was excited about that. Today, lost and found. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus tells us the story of what it means to be lost. Lord, open our hearts to your scripture this day. Open our hearts to the wisdom, the understanding of Jesus' story. Lord, may we meet Jesus this morning in a special way. We ask in your name. Amen. Well, the story is told of a father, his daughter and granddaughter who were at the mall shopping. The daughter asked her dad to watch his granddaughter while she did some shopping. Well, the grandfather looked away for just a brief moment, and when he turned his attention back, his granddaughter was gone. He panicked. He scanned the area, but the little girl was nowhere to be seen. He started moving through stores, going up one aisle and down the other, but he couldn't find her. Finally, he came across his daughter, and they both started searching for the little girl. 
But the mother knew something that the grandfather didn't. She knew the little girl's favorite toy store. They went quickly, quickly to that store and there was the little girl happily looking at the toys. She did not even realize she was lost. Are you lost? Deb and I enjoy hiking and on Friday afternoon, we went up to Buzzard's Roost. How many of you have hiked Buzzard's Roost? It's awesome, isn't it? Did you know you can get lost on Buzzard's Roost? But I told Deb, it's okay. No matter what we do, as long as we go downhill, we'll be okay. Now the trail didn't go the way I thought the car was. And we meandered the, uh, the wrong way for a long time until suddenly the trail turned and we ended up where we started. I never was lost, but I thought I was lost. Luke shares two parables in our scripture text today. The parable of a lost sheep and the parable, the story of the lost coin. Now when Jesus tells a story or a parable, there are usually different groups that he's talking to. And the parable may mean something different to each of the groups. Our scripture said, many tax collectors and other outcasts came to listen to Jesus and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law started grumbling this man welcomes outcasts and even eats with them. Two different groups, and both are listening to Jesus, but for a very different reason. Jesus tells a story to teach the truth of God's Word. And the story speaks to both the outcasts and also to the Pharisees who believed they are better than all the others. The stories are simple in form and structure, but do they cut to the very heart of the issue of that moment? The issue for both the outcasts and the Pharisees. In the first parable or story, the shepherd has a hundred sheep and he has lost one. One has strayed away. He's lost 1% of his flock, yet it said he risked leaving the 99 there in the wilderness to search for the one that was lost. How many of you have ever raised sheep? One sheep is not worth going to find, let me tell you. As a farmer, if they're dumb enough to wander off like that, they're just not worth going to find. Common sense would tell us that's not the right thing to do. Don't put your whole flock at risk for one sheep. The value in the eyes of the world is just not that great. It wouldn't be worth the risk of losing your flock. In the parable of the coin, the woman loses one of her ten coins. Now the coin of that day was a drachma, a coin with the value of about one day's wages. And it's very possible that this woman had the ten coins that would have been a dowry that she received when she was married. In the eyes of the world, it had little value, but both items carried great value to the one who lost it. So if you've ever lost something of great value, was it value in the eyes of the world? Or was it valuable? and precious to you. Sometimes we search and we search and we search. Sometimes we find that which is lost. And it's, it's exciting. It's good. 
And sometimes we never find it. Gone forever. As a young man, just a few years ago, I was drawn to the woman of my dreams. And her name was Deb. And when we graduated high school, I knew Deb was the girl for me. And so I went out and I spent all of my money on a wedding ring to propose to Deb $357. Virtually all the money I had. And you actually had to kind of have a, a bit of a magnifying glass to see the diamond. But that ring symbolized my love for Deb. We were married and we were farming. And so he decided to add some bottle calves to our farm. And so we purchased bottle calves. How many of you have ever fed a bottle calf? All right, you got the, the milk replacer, you got the bottle and the big nipple, and you're feeding the calf. But if you have more than one, what do the others want? They want that bottle. So Deb grew up on a dairy farm. She was used to feeding bottle calves. So she stuck her hand out so the other calves could suck on her fingers. I came home that night from working in the fields and she was sitting in the kitchen just weeping. She said, Barry, I lost my wedding ring. She said, I'm sure one of the calves had sucked it off when I was feeding the calves. Well, we were devastated. We didn't have a lot of money. We had no money for another ring. That ring was the symbol of our love and we weren't about to go looking for it. <laughs> Short time later, my grandma passed away. Grandma Ada, my dad's mom, passed away. And a short time after that, my dad came to me and he said, Barry, I asked my brothers if I could have my mom's wedding ring. He said, I want you to have it to give to Deb. Wasn't the same ring. It was way, way, way better. <laughs> and to this day, Deb wears my grandma's wedding ring as a symbol of our love. The lost ring had been replaced by something that was even more special and valuable. Jesus tells the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin to help us understand our focus in life. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law they felt that they were elevated, they were better, they were more important than the common people, the tax collectors, the outcasts of society. But Jesus said, in the same way there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't straight. Now the question this morning is, as we look at this parable, these stories of Jesus, are you one of the 99? Or are you one who is lost? Are you one of the, the humble, the outcast, the common? Or are you like the teachers and the Pharisees where you believe you are a little better than others. I have been shocked as we move to Rapid City. We are in the center of town, downtown area. We have homeless all around us, impoverished people all around us, and it took my breath away. I'd never experienced in this magnitude that portion of society. And there's not a morning that I don't come to the church and see those desperate in the times of life. And Jesus speaks to me every morning. And I have to be honest, I don't know how 
to fix it. I only know that God loves them as much or more than He loves me. And so I can't look beyond them. I have to see them as a child, a person of God. Romans 3.23, Paul said, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Whether you're on the street homeless or whether you're the wealthiest person in Rapid City, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All need Jesus Christ. And we're all in this journey together. You see, God doesn't see the outside of who we are. God sees our hearts. And God judges our hearts. And that's why many times I just kneel and I say, Lord, change my heart that I might see and love like Jesus. That I might see the lost and the broken and see them in the eyes of Christ. The Good Shepherd left 99 to seek and find the one who was lost. But then Jesus said, when the shepherd found the one who was lost, he called everyone together to celebrate the joy of one who is lost coming home. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. That's the heart, the basis of our teaching today that we are all lost. Many of you have been found. You live in the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. Others are still looking for that place in life where I might live in the grace of Jesus Christ. In January of 2000, Billy Graham was invited to speak at a luncheon in his honor, and he reluctantly agreed he did not like those places. After wonderful things were said about him, Dr. Graham stepped to the podium, and he looked at the crowd and said this, I'm reminded today of Albert Einstein, the great physicist who this month has been honored by Time magazine as the man of the century. Einstein was once traveling from Princeton on a train when the conductor came down the aisle punching the tickets of every passenger. When he came to Einstein, Einstein reached in his pocket and he couldn't find his ticket. So he reached in his other pocket. It wasn't there. He looked in his briefcase and he couldn't find his ticket. He looked all around the area beside him and he couldn't find it. And the conductor said, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are. We all know who you are. I'm sure you bought a ticket. Don't worry about it. Nodded appreciatively and the conductor continued down the aisle in tickets. As he was ready to move to the next car, he turned around and he saw the great physicist down on his hands and knees looking under his seat for his ticket. The conductor rushed back and said, Dr. Einstein, don't worry. I know who you are. There is no problem. You don't need a ticket. I'm sure you bought one. Einstein looked at him and said, young man, I too know who I am. What I don't know is where I'm going. (laughs) Having said that, Billy Graham continued. See the suit I'm wearing, he said. It's a brand new suit. My wife and my children and my grandchildren are telling me I've gotten a little slovenly in my old age. I used to be a bit more fastidious. So I went out and I bought a new suit for this luncheon and for one more occasion. This is the suit in which I'll be buried. But when you hear I'm dead, I don't want you to immediately remember the suit I'm wearing. 
I want you to remember this. I not only know who I am, but I also know where I am going. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible said that we are sinners condemned to eternal death except that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus Christ to pay the penalty for our sin. And it's through the love of Jesus Christ that we may have the assurance of life everlasting. No matter what this old body does, it will decay and it will die. But through Jesus Christ, life is everlasting. You are never lost when you love and trust in Jesus Christ. Deb's wedding ring was never found, but it was replaced with a new ring that's even more precious. Our lives are made new by the redeeming love of Jesus Christ. We close this morning by asking, do you know where you're going? Or do you need to be made new through Jesus Christ? Call on the Good Shepherd, and the Good Shepherd will seek the one who is lost. And then we will celebrate when the one is found. Amen. Will you pray with me?